Hey guys, this is Tigran and today we are going to discuss how to configure your Node.js application with TypeScript. TypeScript probably the most discussed topic in Node.js community for the past few years because it just gives a lot of opportunity to write a bug free code or like find even type errors whenever you try to compile that uh, with some executable uh, Node.js application. So Node.js itself can run a TypeScript so you have to have some kind of a transpiler or even a specific configuration for your uh, TS configuration just to be able to compile your TypeScript to uh, some common JavaScript language in order just to give a Node.js opportunity to run it in production. But for the development there is a lot of uh, tools that you can use, uh, especially we are going to use TS Node uh, just to run that locally and for local tests uh, and even like just basically for your development environment. So the rest is just a plain Node.js setup with Express.js processes, nothing specific uh, to TypeScript anymore other than like having a t a certain uh, types definitions and an actual Node.js application configuration. So let's just jump in a code and let's uh, build our Node.js and TypeScript configuration project setup done and uh, move forward with that. Stay tuned. So to get started with this uh, project, we actually have a simple git uh, setup which is which contains just basic like editor config and git ignore files that you will use anyway just to configure your project from the start. Uh, and to get started with actually npm and Node.js projects, you most probably running every time the npm in it. And let's call this uh, project uh, in a proper way like uh, having it node typescript uh, package version let's leave it as is uh, nothing more so the description is empty and uh, entry point index gs is totally fine we'll change that later on we don't use any test command right now and everything is set up correctly we have a git repository there license is mit and we will select that later on uh, as well so everything is changeable let's leave it as is so having this said that after like making npm in it we are basically getting this npm configuration which is totally fine we can change everything later on and we don't use something specific there right now uh, the only thing is that we have to right now add a dependencies uh, for this project which is probably going to be uh, uh, something like express typescript uh, body parser this is for handling uh, post requests and getting JSON in, uh, out of the uh, HTTP body we are going to use also cores which is kind of standard for any kind of API uh, which gives ability to make an HTTP calls out of uh, the uh, like every kind of domain name that we can define there so it's uh, we, we are just going to use that as default so nothing special there and the thing that we are going to uh, like focus on specifically is TypeScript REST uh, which is uh, basically a wrapper around Express.js itself and which gives really good opportunity to uh, write TypeScript based class based uh, like code express routing and handlers uh, which are specifically tied to TypeScript. So this is the main dependencies that we will have and there's also development dependencies that we are going to have uh, like uh, when we want to run our project locally and uh, or we want to just compile our project. The most important one is Node-mon uh, which allows us to refresh our compiler whenever we got some file changes 
Of course, TS node for running TypeScript files without compiling them. And uh, we are also going to install as a development dependency the types for cores. Uh, so yeah, that's mostly it for like installing necessary packages we probably don't need anything else right now uh, but uh, we have to define our project structure right now so what I'm going to do is I'm adding a basic SRC folder and an actual index.ts uh, file which is going to be our main uh, TypeScript entry point and so because we already have our TypeScript uh, set up for this project we have to have a TypeScript configuration file which is tsconfig.json and that file basically defines what kind of uh, configuration your TypeScript is going to be and for the most of the Node.js projects this is basically a similar thing to do uh, just then adding uh, libraries that we are going to use or depend on in terms of a syntax and uh, what kind of path parameters we are going to use and type definition routes and rest of the configurations that mostly uh, are the same for base Node.js applications. Uh, if you want to dive deeper in this kind of configuration options and what you will get out of that, you can just check out the TypeScript documentation itself uh, for understanding better what kind of configurations are you able to do. But if you just copy this, uh, it will definitely work fine uh, unless you want to make a specific configuration for that. And the most important one that I wanted to uh, explain is the exclude one uh, which basically excludes every uh, like file inside node modules and the build one because uh, if you include them then you most probably you will have uh, a lot of CPU resource uh, usage uh, for TypeScript and specifically for your uh, VS code or other code editor which are going to analyze entire code base every time when you type something so that's why I'm usually excluding these ones because they are mostly not used uh, anyway you are not making any changes there it's just read only so you don't have to have them uh, inside your TypeScript configuration uh, watchers so that's probably it for TypeScript configuration hopefully we will be coming back to that anytime soon so the rest is actually uh, going to be an actual uh, node.js uh, like express uh, code base that <clears throat> we are going to handle uh, so the actual uh, like configuration that we are having for express uh, is basic uh, to any kind of project except uh, we are using a TypeScript REST uh, which is basically handles uh, TypeScript wrapper for the Express itself uh, but the rest like we are uh, defining our app uh, using a course middleware using body parser JSON middleware and uh, then after having all these middleware setups we are basically defining our TypeScript REST uh, for uh, build our services which means that it works over all class definitions that you will see uh, in a minute and defines all the routes uh, and compiles ev everything to uh, express routing and uh, rest is actually pretty simple we are defining port if we don't get a valid port number from environment variable of port uh, then we basically picking up a 4000 port as a default one and listening on that uh, at the end of the file so this is pretty standard express GS configuration but as you can see like everything is defined uh, type sp specific and if I don't uh, if I don't define like this parse int uh, 
uh, this port variable will complain that it's not a val valid number and it, because environment variables by default coming as strings so you have to have kind of like pre-processing of that string and make sure that it compiles down to a proper number instead of using a string so for regular javascript you don't want to worry about that kind of things but because we are using mainly a typescript we have to have that in order to be able to run uh, our application so uh, because we want to define routes uh, specific to our application uh, and usually what I'm doing is I'm making a folder called handlers you can call anything you want it's just personal preference and I'm making an index.ts file there uh, which basically going to handle uh, like all other uh, like routes imports uh, and uh, like base things to do for entire routing itself and then I'm going to define here uh, uh, like handler called health <clears throat> which is basically a health check uh, route uh, to get let's say if service is running or not for your deployment later on or if you want to check an actual up API version uh, you will handle that so what we are doing here is basically we are defining a path uh, as a main route uh, for entire application defining a class health which is part of the TypeScript REST syntax and uh, some comments uh, that we are going to use this for CI CD etc so you can define this uh, for your classes which then later on going to be uh, compiled down as a documentation for your routes uh, which is pretty convenient uh, and also this is the like get route for index and as a response we are getting uh, status ok uh, with an actual version coming from package json so this is pretty straightforward handler and we don't have to worry about like any other stuff except uh, usually what i'm doing you can see that right now it complains that i don't have helpers uh, package because uh, for my project specifically and I really recommend that keeping this structure as well on your project I'm usually making a helpers uh, directory and uh, putting like everything that relates to like something generic here uh, and defining that as a like specific topic let's say I'm making this uh, short uh, shortcuts shortcuts.ts which is going to be uh, like a main entry point for uh, functions like response ok response error which means that if this error message uh, will be delivered to client or not or like are we going to use uh, data inside the response ok so this is basically a shortcut functions uh, that I'm going to use uh, for the rest of the application and because I want to make available out of this helper directory itself I'm going to export uh, from an actual import uh, for the entire shortcuts file and here uh, you can see that now I have available uh, response ok which is going to send back to client error false and the message empty so that on a client side it will be a consistent that whenever uh, there is a, re a response okay uh, you will get error false and message is empty and uh, vice versa if you get an error uh, you get error true and the message will contain an actual error message that coming from server so it's pretty convenient to use these kind of shortcut functions as a helpers and here for the hand for using this handler we're basically going to import this health uh, handler uh, inside the handlers index.ts file and because we want to use to introduce these handlers 
uh, before uh, building an actual uh, services uh, just to make them available for our uh, application we are going to import these all handlers uh, like importing all TypeScript rest uh, classes for wrapping express paths and then when TypeScript rest builds its own services it basically tries to find every imported class uh, with this path parameter and defined classes with uh, this kind of like routing configurations that we have available for TypeScript REST and it compiles down to express middleware and routing so this is probably like the most generic way of defining TypeScript REST API and I'm using this structure for almost all my applications that I use like for the past two years at least and which is which gives like huge uh, like flexibility in terms of a project structure you can basically define your handlers using a namespace or uh, grouping them out based on your uh, preference or application type and all you have to do is just import each handler to your main index.ts handler file or uh, like a child directory that you use so it's pretty pretty easy uh, to get started with this so we got only one pending thing to do which is uh, making a start script and build script for now uh, for our application which is uh, basically a pretty standard one we don't going to use tests right now uh, we will add that later on uh, so what we are going to do is a start function is actually not daemon watch uh, for all kind of ts file changes uh, which executes ts node on a main index.ts file then it just runs up ts node and starts everything up and build actually handles uh, removing an actual build directory and compiling all TypeScript uh, using an actual ts config json uh, file configuration for TypeScript itself so these uh, scripts uh, are going to be available over yarn or npm I usually use yarn uh, so if you type let's say yarn start uh, you will get a message that hey our server is started and if I'll make let's say curl HTTP localhost 4000 I'll get back an actual uh, message which we defined in our health handler which is like status ok version and response ok which means that our error is false and message is empty so status ok and version is 1.0.0 which is defined in our package so this is the uh, probably easiest way to get started with Node.js and TypeScript and using TypeScript REST is actually giving you huge ability to write uh, a proper TypeScript version of your log JavaScript logic and tie that down with an actual express so TypeScript REST is just a wrapper on top of express so if you want to write a custom middleware for your express application you can do that right now here and uh, rest routes is defined under the uh, class definition for the path uh, or like get this type of project setup is actually used uh, in all of my node.js based applications for the past uh, two years I'm mainly developing uh, in TypeScript whenever I need to write the JavaScript because it's so convenient to have these types and also uh, m most of the code editors giving huge auto completion suggestions if you have types in place so 
it just gives enormous uh, benefits as a developer and as a project manager uh, just be able to identify a specific bugs or even write up a documentation so next up uh, a video is coming up how to tie uh, postgresql with our current uh, node.js and typescript application setup and we are going to dive into deep configurations there and how to efficiently configure database with your node.js application we are going to use mongodb and postgresql at the same time just to see what are the benefits and differences between them so if you haven't yet subscribed please subscribe to this channel and hit that like button it just helps me a lot to keep forward with this 